Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Great International Craft Show and I am about to do some foundation piecing uh, for some um, gloves. So these are gloves for the oven, so oven mitts, okay. I have a free pattern for you to um, download and uh, I'll let you know I've got the insel bright, one layer of that, one layer of, of a wool blend, it doesn't matter. Um, and also my pattern on top. Now, uh, in this pattern I don't have it numbered, but I'm going to go through this uh, so that you know I have an iron and my also my um, bits of fabric scraps. So I've just got scraps. It's a great scrap buster. Okay, so lots of scraps. And what I'm going to do to one side, I'm going to do to the other side. So I won't run you through both sides, just one side, and we'll go through putting this together. So bear with me, I'm going to iron some of my scraps and we'll be um, starting this very soon. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just pin this down to the, the two layers um, of wadding just to make it easier for me to hold on to it and uh, then we're going to start. So I'll just grab a couple of pins just to stop it from moving while I'm getting started. You could baste them on, that would be fine also. And uh, you could just do a big basting stitch around it. I'm just going to pin it for now and uh, get started. Okay, so normally with um, foundation piecing, you just have your paper and your, and, your and your fabric. But with this one, I want to do it all together. So I want to quilt it at the same time as actually doing it. So I can't see through it, but I've got a fair idea where it's going to be. So my first, I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. So the top would be the actual um, part where it would go around your wrist. So my top piece needs to be big enough to cover that area, which would be that one. And the first one I'm going to do, I'm just going to trim that. And the first piece, I'm actually going to sew it straight down, not on this side, it'll be on the other side. Being with a petite too, they're pretty good. They, you know, right or wrong side, it doesn't really matter, but you could do this in any fabric you like. So, what I'm going to do is grab that pin, place it very close, within about an inch. It's on that side, so I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to place that there and get that pin again and pin in the centre of that area that needs to be stitched first. I have a cut line and a seam line. Um, so you'll stitch on the seam line, to, um, which will be the first line I'll be going straight across. So I just want to make sure that I'm for those, which I have. Make sure it hasn't flipped up in any way. Then take it to your machine and stitch from one side on the seam line to the other side. Um, you can back stitch if you like, can help. Oops, it is. So start back stitch straight on that seam line. The beauty of this one is it's not going into a quilt, so if it's not exactly perfect, oops, it is, wrong one. Um, that's okay. Then cut that. Now you put your stitches down to in the size, so make sure that they are a little bit um, smaller. So my stitch length is around about two. Um, you can do it even smaller, and you'll notice it'll start cutting the actual uh, paper, which is what you want it to do. So then I'm going to come around and do this other seam line. Actually, I'll just lift that up a bit easier. Around here. Oops, put your foot down. That would help. And this is just for the first one. So I'm just going to sew right around there. You might need a walking foot on your machine um, just because the um, 
subsidized one more. Okay, don't worry one. Because the um, this machine is industrial, so it's quite happy to sew through that many layers. But being um, a home machine, it might not. And there's the first one on. Okay, so you'll see it there. Then what I want you to do is just flip that back at the seam, the first seam. So the one, not the one that goes around here, but the one that's going to join the next lot. Then I want you to, I want you to flip that back a bit. Get that all that wadding out of the way. Now I'm just going to use my scissors um, just for, for convenience and just cut yourself a quarter inch seam. You can use the blade if you want to. You can um, use an add a quarter ruler, whatever it's whatever suits you. So I've just trimmed back that. And then the next bit of fabric needs to be big enough. I'm going to pick a different colour, maybe the green needs to lay up to that seam like that but big enough that when you flip it over it's going to cover that next section which this one will i've made sure that it's big enough i'm just going to lay it up to there now if you want to you could adhere it on first or pin it down first i'm just going to hold onto it and flip it and stitch back on that line but i'm just going to stitch about one eighth of an inch before that previous stitch line that I've already done. Um, we go. So it's literally right next to it, just to, um, so I cover, when I actually cover, uh, when I actually finished, it should cover that stitch line that I did before. Okay, then I should flip it back over. It's a bit of a stitch and flip. Flip that down, press it out nice and firm. I've covered that stitch line that's there, just like that. And I'm going to then put that over and I'm going to stitch my next seam. Looks like I might have. <laughs> you think I would have checked that? I'll just change the bobbin. I don't know, we've got bobbin. Don't know what will happen here. It's in the air. Might not have picked up the thing. Go back under. Up we go. So do that same. Hopefully it picks it up this time. Yep, it has. And that stitches that line a lot across there. From there to there. Then you, I normally trim little th threads and that as I go. Fold that back. Fold back. The actual batting let that release you can have that seam more than a quarter inch it doesn't matter um, it just reduces bulk mine's a bit rough because I'm literally just hacking away at it um, but either way is fine I can use that piece in another one then you get your next color making sure it's going to, which I already have, going to cover the whole area. And you go from, place it up this way on top of the fabric you've already stitched, line it up with the seam edge, uh, the, um, sorry, the cut edge, like that. You can pin it if you like. I'm gonna flip and I'm going to stitch just above that previous stitch line. So that way I cover what I've already done. OK, 
Okay, then I can fold that. Just press it. You can iron it too if you wanted to. You can run the iron on it. it won't hurt it. A bit flatter because it is two layers of wadding. And then flip it back over and stitch the third line. Just going to pop that out of the way. Come on. In the pattern I've allowed quite a big seam. You can make it smaller. It does not matter. In the end it becomes yours and it'll be what you make it. Flip back over, got the seam in there, lift that up, push your wadding away, cut your quarter inch seam. Oh, mine's a little bit bigger than that, but that's okay. It's all going to be in the mix. Flip it back, nice, press out your hands, grab the next colour, <clears throat> line it up with that cut edge. I'm giving myself plenty of room. Flip it back over and stitch one eighth on the right hand side of that seam that you just did. Flip it over, flip your fabric. Nice and firm, put it back, and now stitch your fourth seam. Up you go. <clears throat> Oops. And then I'm going to flip that just again. making sure my wadding and that is out of the way and what I do to this one I'm going to do to the other you can do different colors if you want to it doesn't have to be all the same I'm just going to trim that excess off there push it back press it out now this next section is quite big so that might not do it so I need to look at it oh yeah so if I have it that way it's going to flip with a bit of luck I'll be right so that's my thin side so make sure it's that way so I'm just double checking to make sure I'm going to cover the area I need put it down put it down and now I'm going to put a uh, one eighth of an inch on the right hand side of that um, of that seam I just stitched So with your standard sewing machine, you will need to um, do a, use a um, walking foot, like I said, flatten that out, turn it back over and stitch the next one. Now what you'll notice is that there's a gap in between, just stitch straight across, we can cut that. Oops. I'll stitch that one. Oh, there's no gap in this one, it's the next one. Stitch that, flip her over, get everything out of the way. Just have enough fabric in that one, that's good. Trim out your excess. Flip that back and get another colour. Get that orange one and this one here lining up with that cut edge it's a bit rough but it's there flip it back over and stitch one on one eighth of that inch on the right hand of that seam on the right hand side up we go I do love the jack. If you're ever interested in getting yourself a jack, um, perfect for this sort of thing because it just cuts through the bulk. Um, brilliant machine. 
it's only a straight stitch machine, but by gee, she does some great work. Fold that out. She's doing all the work, not me. Fold that back down. Flip her over. Now we've got that gap in between. We're going to ignore that and just stitch right across. If you're worried about that gap and when you're stitching seams coming undone, you can go back and forward here, back and forward at the start of the next gap and back and forward at the end. And that will help um, secure that seam when you cut through. So then we've done that one. Now we need to just fold out the excess, cut away. Trying to get all this done in a uh, half an hour video is hard for me because I chat a lot. <laughs> all right. Next one, just having a look at the pattern. It's only a small piece from here to here. So I'm just going to put the pin there so I can see and I know where my seam finished. So from here to there. So I'm going to grab I had a small piece before. I might grab that little bit of Oh, it might not be big enough. Maybe this one. A bit of green. That can go there. And I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to stitch one eighth. Looks like a courier coming. One eighth on the right hand side of that seam. Again, back stitch, back stitch, and back stitch and cut off. Nice and quick. Oh, I missed it. How easy was that? So this one I might pin in place. It wants to move. So let's pin this baby in place. And I'm just going to keep the pin out of the way. Over. Try again. Here we go. So back stitch. Back stitch over the gap, back stitch, and all the way across. Hopefully, I've caught it this time. Yes, I did. See, pins help. Flip it back down. I'm just going to pop a pin there and stitch the next bit. Give me two seconds. Okay, we're going to do that second last little seam. Along that seam there, and cut off, trim away your excess, got to pin out, take your pin out, cut away your excess, whoops, there it is, that's that. Alright, and then we get the last bit of fabric, which I'm going to do in, I've got a little bit of hot pink there, so that'll be good. Line her up with the seam, flip it over, making sure it's in line this time. Oh, that's the dog going off. And stitch. Now this time, because I've turned the pattern around, it's on my left hand side, but I'm still that one eighth over. Yep, all good. <clears throat> I'm just going to pin this last bit down here in the corner, out of the way. And my last step of this is to go all the way around that dotted line, which is my last stitch seam, and that holds all those edges and everything in. Just make sure everything's out of the way. Come on, up you go. Okay, just tick along now. When you come up to the curves, you're going to need to sew along, lift, turn, sew along, lift, turn, all that sort of thing um, to get all the way around there nice and neat. Lift and turn, lift and turn. Come up to the point, lift, oops, turn, all the way down. Let's 
So I'm, I'm just stitching so that we've around about a quarter inch from the edge of that cut, cut line. Okay, so as long as none of the fabric has turned over, or I've got a little bit of a little bit there, I might have to just come in a bit smaller on that corner there. You can see I've missed a little bit, so I'm just going to come in there a little bit, make that a bit smaller. And that is better it'll it'll go in the seam it's good enough to be a pass so what I want you to do now is come into this uh, with your scissors and cut on that line now you're going to repeat this for the second part of it once you've cut on the line you can take out the pa uh, paper and get it all sewn down nicely you can also decorate this with, you know, ribbons or rickrack or anything like that as well. Whatever suits. So you just cut that around. You know, it's pretty rough, but, you know, those excess bits of fabric and that, they'll get used up in another one another project all right now in that little bit here cut up to that little seam but don't cut the seam and around the uh, thumb and the uh, finger area just trim those there just helps turning so I'll just put a few nicks in them and I'll go and do the next, the other side of it. I'll tear out the paper and come back and show you how to put the two together. Okay, so that's it there. You can see it there. And uh, we're going to, um, I'll make the other one and I'll be back in a second. Shake of the lamb's tail. Okay, we're back. So what I've done is I have finished both of these babies. I have cut out to the lining, okay, in black. I also have a little bit of black here that I'm just going to trim and fold and fold. So fold it in, probably... I don't know, maybe about four inches, I suppose, and then just fold it again. And I'm going to stitch down the center just to hold that in place. I don't want to go that way. A double stitch if you want to but that's that's enough for what I want um, I'm just going to trim off those edges make them neat uh, this is going to be the hanger so I want to fold it in half so um, I just got to figure out which side I want them hanging uh, probably that side so it'll sit up here in the corner just below the corner I should say you can put it right in the corner if you want to. might make it a bit hard to turn out. So I'll just go below that corner, just like that, on one side. And just give it a quick stitch down. Just one eighth, just to hold it down. So then it's there for when we need it. Now we're going to get these two with right sides together. And we're going to sew all the way around. Now you might want to clip these to hold them together. Um, 
try and line up your seam as much as you can. Um, I'm going to probably sew in a bit over a quarter of an inch just so I miss that seam that I've already got there. Oh, pig. And just all the way around. I've taken out all the papers a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same with these, so them right sides together. And with this one, I'm going to leave a turn section, so I'm not going to stitch that area there. So I will start up here, leave around about three, four inches. to actually just trying to think how I'm going to do this sorry just bear with me I'll just cut that off I'll leave the opening on the top I think I think I'll do that I'll leave the opening on the top so you can sew all the way around but leave the opening on the top I think that'd be the best way to do it I'm just sewing all the way around this and left I'm leaving that opening at the top there this is just a cotton line like black fabric nothing special so no opening at the side take that back close it up you just want that opening at the top here where you can sew them together by tucking one in the other so we'll go around this one So by following that line, I'm hoping that I actually catch stitches on both sides. You could pin markings, all sorts of stuff. Um, I think it should be fine. Get your fingers out of the way. If I've missed any, I'll be able to tell by just turning it over and having a look and seeing what I've done. Um, probably could give it a bit of a touch up there, but the rest looks pretty good. So I'm just going to turn this over, do it this side so I can keep that even. Okay, so what do you want? Turn this around, or oh, before you do, just give it a bit of a snip in those areas that have got a turn. Won't matter too much in the inside. Okay, turn that so the right side is facing out, and you want to push out those little thumb bits and stuff like that. Turn them out as best you can. You get another chance to do this. Thumb bit there. So I'm going to place that inside here. I'm just going to clip one side all the way around. And I'll be back when that's done. Okay, so I've got that clipped around. I'm going to leave an opening now and I'm just going to stitch that in, giving myself a good seam. And uh, we're almost done.
little bit of fiddling. Oops, wrong button. Come up to there, back stitch, cut off. Come over to the next one where I've left my gap. Yeah. Then make sure you leave yourself enough gap. I do tend to make the gaps too small, and then I have all sorts of dramas trying to turn them out. Um, Okay, we'll soon find out whether that's big enough. So all the way there. All right, so what I need to do reaching, grabbing. This is normally where I fight and look ridiculous. So let me come back. <laughs> okay, I've got it turned right side out now. Um, it was a little bit tricky, but um, I got it with this which is a drawstring threader by shoving that in there and a pair of scissors <laughs> which I don't always advise to do so what I've done is with the, the the lining I've pulled a little bit of it out towards me and I'm going to have a lip of that all the way around so I'm going to top stitch that down all the way around um, I'm just Clipping as I go just because I just I just you don't have to do this but I just sort of wanted that little bit of black on the edge there just gives it a bit of a nice finish off um, but I will go around there now and uh, top stitch that down in place so hopefully I don't miss any spots and fingers crossed here we go We are done there she blows all done and ready to go and the beauty with this is it's nice and thick Put my thumb in there and you've got lots of um, lots of space sorry lots of space lots of protection from the heat okay so I'm just gonna push that in there a little bit more eep, eep, eep. So she is ready and raring to go. All go. All good. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy and uh, I hope you have a go at this as well. Um, like I say, you can um, get this download free and thanks to everyone at Gix and I hope you enjoy the show. See you later. Bye.